As we look back 10 years after the shock and awe bombing and the war in Iraq, I think we have a duty to remember history or else we're doomed to repeat it. In Philadelphia, I can remember from, the, from City Hall, a banner was dropped that said, kill them all and let God sort them out. It broke my heart so that, especially as a Christian, I began to try to wrestle with what the proper response should be. And 10 years ago, I got to go on a delegation to Iraq. When I was in Iraq, I remember in the middle of the bombing, this doctor holding a child that was riddled with missile fragments. And this doctor looked up at the sky as the bombs fell, and he said, this violence is for a world that has lost its imagination. And he said, has your country lost its imagination? Has our world lost its imagination? And I think a lot of us look back over the last 10 years of war and even the sanctions before that and go, these are failures of imagination. In the New Testament, it says, let's not conform to the patterns of this world, but let us be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So let's have a new way of thinking, a new imagination about the way that we live in the world. I'm convinced that one of the things that we need a movement of is a movement of life, of Christians and others who are committed to, to this idea that every person is precious. I live in Philadelphia, which we have uh, almost one homicide a day. And there's been an, an, a powerful movement where people of faith and conscience have gathered outside of gun shops and uh, began vigiling, began raising questions about where the kids get the guns. And that started for me not as an issue, uh, a debate around gun control, but it started when a 19-year-old kid was killed on my front porch. And that was what stirred in me this idea that, wow, what, do, what is God's dream for the world? I'm pretty sure it's not for one kid to die every day in Philadelphia of gun violence and not 10,000 people in the United States to die of homicides and gun violence. So let's, let's reimagine our country. Let's reimagine the world because it doesn't have to stay the way it is. In the Bible, the prophets Micah and Isaiah uh, say this. They say, God looks down and says, my people will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And then nation will not rise up against nation and people will study war no more. It's this amazing vision of people beating their swords into plows, turning instruments of death into tools for peace and for life. And I love that vision. So much so that we actually met some blacksmiths and some welders that were like, we're ready to do it. <laughs> so we started doing it. We invited people to donate weapons if they had them. And they, and they you know, wanted to not see them used for, for death, but to see them converted you know, to something else. We turned an AK-47 into a rake and a shovel. And then we took uh, um, another AK-47 and it made three little hand trowels. We did the first weapons conversion in, on the 10th anniversary of September 11th. Now there's people that all over the world have sent us pictures of weapons conversions, so it's snowballing. I think it's a, it's an, a, a beautiful image.